Welcome to another daily dose of SAP Analytics Cloud. This time we will take a look how we can set up currency translation. So we will start with a spreadsheet. And as you can see, the spreadsheet has information around order dates, order IDs, countries, different currencies per country. And also it's important to notice that our orders are basically all in the first seven months of 2019. So we need to make sure we configure the currency translation accordingly. So the first item we're going to do is to create the model based on the spreadsheet. So we go in, we import the file. So then we can see the data in SAP Analytics Cloud and we can configure the dimensions accordingly. So we choose the order date. We'll make sure it's month, day, and year. We'll go to the order DID. It's a general dimension. The country now becomes an organization and that gives us the benefit that we can configure the currency dimension as an attribute. So now we can create the model. We save the model into our public folder and give it a name. So after the model has been created, the first thing we're going to do is actually start creating a currency table. So we say we want to build a new one and we give the currency table a name. And then you can see we have several columns that we need to fill in. Oh, we simply start with the source currency, when the currency ratio is actually going to be valid. In our case, we configure it for January 2019. Then the target currency. The category allows us to specify if we have actual or budget and if we want us to have specific items for that. We could have versions. We can set a specific rate type like closing or average and then the actual rate. So we're just going to fill in the rest into the table. So now we got all the details and we can save the table. So then we need to go back to our previously created model and we need to configure the properties. So we open up the model, we go to the properties, we go to the area currency and we actually enable the currency conversion. The default currency will be US dollars and then we have the table and the date as the dimension for time. So then also we have to go back to the account model and we actually configure our order value to be of currency as otherwise the currency translation wouldn't work. So then we save the changes to our model. And now all what we have to do left is basically creating a new story and using the model with the details that we just created. So we're going in, creating a new story. We're adding a table, choosing the model. And we're starting by adding country into the rows without specifying anything in particular. 
which means the table will use the default currency. So in our case, that means US dollars. So we can see now we got the three countries. We got three values and in the top of the table, we can see it's all US dollars. So now we go and actually select a filter value. As you can see in the panel, we have a cross calculation filter right now set for default currency. So we open it up and now we choose currency, which means each country is using the currency from the organization and the attribute. So now we can see the individual values configured. So before we close this episode, let's also take a quick look at some of the settings in the currency table. So the source currency and the target currency should be clear. You enter basically a currency code. The valid from gives you the option to enter a start date at which this rate becomes basically valid. The exchange rate is the actual rate between those two currencies. The rate type allows you to choose between a closing or an average rate type. So for example, you could have a different rates for different kind of accounts, an average for your expenses or a closing rate for your actual assets. You also have the option for categories. Here you can separate out different rates for your actual, your budget, and your forecast. But you can leave it actually blank, so that creates it a general rate. And then the version allows you to have actually different versions even for certain kind of scenarios. So as an example, you can specify specific, and then you can create a rate version, which you then use as part of your currency translation. With this, I want to thank you for listening to another episode of your daily dose of SAP Analytics Cloud.